In this video, I'm going to show how to make a miniature electromagnetic mortar that's good for knocking down blocks or just breaking fragile things around your house. Here's a look at the internal circuitry outside its case hooked up to a voltmeter. In one position, the switch charges the capacitor bank through the mains, and in the other position it fires the coil. The schematic is pretty simple. Power comes in on the hot line from the mains. It powers a red LED to let you know the mortar is plugged in and the AC is rectified through four diodes and two 50 ohm resistors to avoid tripping a breaker or blowing up a diode from inrush current. This charges the capacitor and when you're ready to fire, you flip the switch to connect the capacitor to the coil. It's also worth pointing out that what I show as the ground on the schematic is actually the neutral line of the mains, which is the wider prong. You might be wondering why I only show one capacitor on my schematic even though there's 18 of them. That's because the schematic represents the equivalent capacitance of all the capacitors together. Let's look at just one segment of the capacitor bank. Here, six capacitors are wired in series. Here's the formula for the equivalent capacitance of several caps in series. Since all our values are the same, the formula just simplifies down to the capacitance of a single cap divided by the number of caps you have in series. On the other hand, the voltage rating in this case goes up by a factor of 6. This arrangement will allow up to 210 volts. That's more than we need, but for safety and reliability, it's good to have some overhead. All three of these segments are identical, so to figure out the capacitance of our entire bank, we just have to add their values together. And that's the final value that's shown on the schematic. In reality, I had about 1450 microfarads instead of 1650 because manufacturer tolerances on this type of capacitor mean the values could be plus or minus 